In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Arga, Xiab Hirve Pabi, Wagzina Vakalagar, Zamuru, Lamlak and Zamuru. God ascended with a shout, the Lord with the sound of trumpets, sing praises to God. Psalm 47, verses 5. Today we celebrate ascension or Erget. Erget is a Giz word driven from the verb Arga, which translates to ascension. It is, it is one of the nine feasts of our Lord and our God, Jesus Christ, although it is lesser known or lesser celebrated by the faithful uh, because it is overshadowed, uh, overshadowed by the rest of the feasts. It is important that we know it is just as significant as the other celebrations that we do for our Lord. Forty days after his resurrection, after celebrating Tensai, we celebrate Ascension. The, same, the very same way, with so much joy, with so much significance to it, with mahalit, with wada, with liturgy, with with, mas, with so many things, as it, as it is the day we received glory and dignity from our Lord and our God, Jesus Christ. Uh, it is the day that he ascended us with him. He has lifted us with him into the heights of the heavenly kingdom. That's a truly a glorious day, a victorious day. It's also a day that we receive hope. His ascension wasn't a random act. In fact, it is to fulfill the prophecies told in the Old Testament by the prophets, as well as the promises that he has made for his apostles and his followers. Uh, the King David, the heart of God, King David, has foretold his birth, his persecution, his death and his resurrection, and now his ascension in Psalms 47, verse 5, by saying, God ascended uh, with a shout, with the sound of trumpets, saying to him praises. This is King David speaking about the ascension of our Lord and our God, Jesus Christ, as if he was right there, as if he was witnessing it right there with him. He was able to do so because he was the heart of God. That's why God said, he's like my heart. He knows me. He said he is like one that is like my heart, which is why we call him the heart of God. Once again, in Psalms chapter 68, uh, he said uh, he will ascend and he will conquer those who have conquered and then he will give us back blessing. He will, he will send to us a blessing. He has foretold about his ascension so many times. Not only that, but Jesus Christ himself has declared his ascension, has proclaimed his ascension with parallel, uh, with parables uh, paralleling to his ascension. In a way, uh, in, in John chapter 7, verse 3, 33, he says, For I am uh, a little longer with you, then I will go to him who has sent me. And once again in John chapter 16, verse 28, and seven or eight more times within the New Testament, Christ has declared his departure from earth, which declares his ascension but people did not understand what he was talking about at the time so after he completed the 40 days uh god ascended into the heavens so why 40 days what is the significance of this 40 days why did he stay on earth after his resurrection it was important that he did so as the church fathers would say for many reasons they say he stayed on earth for 40 days one of them had he not stayed on earth for that, for that amount of time, being seen for so many people, it would have been impossible to defend our faith. There was a lot of unfaithful, those who did not believe that Christ was the Messiah, proclaiming that his ascension, his victory over death was myth told by the apostles. But the fact that he was on earth, preaching, being seen, be, uh, eating with, uh, with so many people, being around uh, with the presence of so many families, uh, gave the apostles a certain confidence. It gave them hope. They were losing hope. 
they didn't know what to say to those who were disclaiming uh, the ascent, uh, the resurrection of Christ. But because he was seen, seen to many people, it gives us confidence, truly, that he is the Messiah. He is God who gave us salvation. He is the one that died on the cross, resurrected, and he is the one that will give us, give us the kingdom of heaven. This is a beautiful thing. Another thing, 40 is a significant number, whether it be it on the new, on, in the new test, in the Old Testament or the New. In the New Testament, we see our Lord and our God, Jesus Christ, fasting for 40 days and for 40 nights uh, in the Mount of Corinthians, Corinth. And then once again, we see in the Old Testament, Moses fasting 40 days and 40 nights before he received uh, the covenant of the Old Testament. And we see the Israelites spending 40 years within the wilderness before they entered uh, that promised land. That's so humanity, our nature is here. Christ's nature was here after his resurrection for 40 days. And then he brought us into the heavens after 40, 40 days. So that number is really significant, significant to us and to him. And once again, if you remember the story of Adam, after he was created, he stayed on earth for 40 days before he was placed in the garden. As such, the new Adam, our Lord and our God, the first fruit of resurrection, Jesus Christ stayed on earth after his resurrection for 40 days before his ascension. Lastly, Christ came with three objectives to this earth. He had three major uh, uh, objectives when he came down to this, to this earth. The very first thing is the redemption of mankind. We didn't know how to become humans. We didn't know how to act like humans. He did, we forgot why God created us. All the glory, all the value that he has given us, we just dispersed it away. We didn't know how to act like humans. So God came down from the heavens and he showed us the way. This is the way I need you to be. You, can, you are perfect. You are my children. This is the way you should walk. This There is one path to the kingdom that you should take. Although in the New Testament, he has given us so many laws Laws, over 600 laws to become new humans we're not able to follow them our sins were not we're not able to be atoned by the sacrifices that we were making but Christ he said this is the way I am the truth the way the end the life therefore if you follow me if you follow me you will find yourself to be in the kingdom of heaven to the place that I play, uh, prepared for you you will enter I'll go to prepare a place for you where I go you know in the way you know this is where Saint Thomas said Lord we do not know where you are going and we do not know the way. And Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you follow me, if you follow the path that I have paved for you, then you will enter the kingdom of heaven. So we, this path that he has created for us is the very first objective. And secondly, it is the gift that, that he has given us on top of the cross. His death, through his persecution, he taught us prosperity. Through his death, he gave us uh, he gave us life. And through his resurrection, he gave us victory. And through his ascension, he honored the nature of humanity. Our human nature was looked down upon. It was infested. It was corrupted by, by our own sin. But now Christ, after his resurrection, he honored that nature. He honored humanity by ascending us with him all the way to uh, all the way to the heavens and setting us in his throne. Our nature in the heavens when we sat us at the right hand of our Lord our nature is the one that ascended with our Lord that is the glory of the celebration of ascension it's a beautiful story it's a beautiful gift that we should not undervalue or overlook at all whatsoever and lastly he remained on earth for 40 days so that he can uh, farther strengthen the church of that he has built the church that he has established he stayed on earth teaching the apostles how to run the church not only them but the congregation not only them but so many people uh what it means to be within the church of god he taught them the prayer of the covenant he taught he taught them how to structure the church how to run it who to lead it and all these things were taught to us this church was given to us this church the apostolic union the apostolic church was given to us during that time he told them how to structure the church it was a beautiful gift so for those reasons he stayed on earth for 40 days and for 40 nights one it is because it is a witness that so many people uh, saw and which gives us a confidence that it's true that he resurrected it's true that he is the messiah it is true that it is god that gave us the salvation and we can confidently say that it is christ that resurrected it is christ that ascended and secondly 40 is a significant number that which is why we are he honored it right then and there and, uh, and lastly as the three significant objective that god brought to this world one uh, the redemption of mankind teaching us what it means to be humans and lastly the fact 
fact that he instituted the church, established it in the way he wanted it to be established. Uh, and then after completing the 40 days, he took his apostles, 120 families, all the way to Bethany, to Mount the Mountain of Olives, right? So this Mount of Olives is really, really significant, as if it was the place where he would rest after teaching long days in the synagogue. After he taught, he would rest uh, in there, and then he, it's a place where he gave the greatest sermon in Matthew chapter 5, the Beatitudes, how to be in the kingdom of heaven. This is a significant chapter within the, the gospel of Matthew. It teaches us how to be in the kingdom of heaven, how to be humans, what it means to be a perfect human. The chapter literally ends you need, by saying, you need to be as perfect as your father is who is in heaven. It is what he requires us to be. If we have questions, how to act like Christian, if we want to know what Orthodox Christian is supposed to look like, we're supposed to re uh, read the greatest sermon on top of Mount, Mount Olives and read what the Beatitudes are. You know, blessed are those who thirds for the spirit. They will be uh, they will be fed. All these things, all these things are put in this chapter. That is where he gave the greatest sermon of all time. And and another thing is that he taught them. It's the place where he taught uh, he taught the apostles the end of the world as well as his second coming. Not only that, but it's a place where he was captured uh, on that Thursday night. So it's a very significant place. So while he was on uh, on that mountain with on Bethany with the apostles and the families watching him, he instructed them to stay in Jerusalem and not leave without re not leave the Jerusalem until they receive the gift of the Holy Spirit unto Muslim. Until you receive this blessing from the Holy Spirit, until the paraclete comes to this earth and grants you that wisdom, do not leave. It was important for them to stay in one place. Remember the story of Thomas. Thomas, when he was out and about, he missed the resurrection of our Lord. God didn't want that to happen again. So he made sure everybody was collected together so they may receive the Holy Spirit together. It was important they wouldn't leave and walk about. If they had left, Left without receiving the blessing of the Holy Spirit, it would have been impossible for them to defend their faith. If somebody confronted them about the structure and the dogma and the canon of his, their faith, they wouldn't have any answers. But when they when they receive this Holy Spirit, when they receive this gift, is when they will be confident enough to speak before men, because God will be the one that will grant them the words, the righteous way to teach, the righteous way to convince everybody, the righteous way to evangelize the gospel to the world. So it was important that he taught them them to stay to remain in Jerusalem and then he lifted his hands and he blessed them that's what the scripture says in Luke chapter 24 he raised his hand his hands and he blessed them not only did he bless them but he ordained them to to be shepherds for his flock he is the true shepherd and he taught them the apostles how to shepherd his flock not only that but he ordained them to be overseers of the church, the church that he has established by his own blood. This is really, really essential. The reason why we have uh, priests and pa patriarchs and all these things and ordinations is because of the, the, the structure that he gave us right here. He ordained them to be overseers. This is why we have priests. This is why we have deacons. This is why we have bishops and such. This ordination, uh, the, the, the sacrament of ordination was taught to us by Christ himself. He raised his hands, he blessed them, and he ordained them to be overseers of the church, overseer of the church that he established by his own blood. And as they, after he instructed them to, to remain, after he blessed them and ordained them, he started ascending. He started elevating into the heavens and they watched him uh, in glory. It was such a glorious moment. Uh, they couldn't even comprehend it. And they watched him for hours and hours until the angels actually came and said, what are you doing? You need to go back. So it was such a glorious moment. And the way uh, St. Saint, Saint Paul describes it and Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 is so, is so beautiful. It reads this. And without controversy, uh, controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in flesh, which being Christ, justified in the spirit, seized the, uh, seized, seen by the angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up in glory. They received him with so much glory. Not only uh, did the apostles and the family celebrated this, but the angels, it was uh, in a way a homecoming for them. It was their creator, it was their God coming back to his throne. So they received him with so much so, with so much joy and so much happiness. They sang and they shouted. Although King David says shouted, it's actually bay bay, which means ba'elitam. They were singing songs, they were doing all these hymns, beautiful hymns, as they received 
their, their God. Baruch Zaymes and Besam Exavir. And he, he who came in the name of God. So they were really, really happy and really excited to see him. And they celebrated him with so much glory because it was glorious. It was glorious because he was lifted without anyone, anything gravitating him or luring him without anybody, without needing anybody to uplift him. This is really important to understand. He did not vanish from their eyes. He uh, simply got farther away from them because no space, no time can contain our Lord and our God, Jesus Christ. Um, this is why uh, our forefathers said, it's not, it's not, it was not abstraction. It was simply that he got away so far from them, from their eyes, he disappeared from them. It was not vanishing, but because he ascended, he elevated into space, into a place that where they couldn't even see, uh, it's, the Bible says it, it disappeared from them. It's not by, it's not by rikat, but by rikat. So, which is why the author of Melka Yesus composed the following. Salam ergatikar, za'iyitrakka matanu. Wala nevratikar salam, abuka ustayamanu. Yesus Christos, lekihaka am ta'amun. So, this is a beautiful way uh, he described it in, in Melka Yesus. It was an amazing thing. He said, glory and greetings to your ascension. Which is glorious. No, no, uh, no space can contain you. Which has no boundaries, no limitations at all to your ascension. It's a beautiful way that he greeted it, and then he said, "And then greetings to you who will sit at the right hand of the Father." It was truly glorious, and it was completely different than anything that we have seen before, anything that we have heard before from the scripture. It was a different type of ascension from the other ones. And Christ teaches that, he actually taught that before even his ascension. In John chapter 3, verse 13, Christ says the, the following, No one ascended to the heavens, but he who came down from the heaven, and that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. It's a beautiful way he described it. No one ascended into the heaven. No one ascended to the heavens except the one that came down from the heaven. And he said, and that is the son of man. He was still on earth. And he said, it's the son of man that lives within the heavens. It was really significant because it was unlike those we've seen in the scriptures. It was completely different than that. It wasn't, it wasn't like the Isaiah where he saw the heavens opened up. And we, where he was able to witness the throne of God. It was not like Enoch who vanished into the nation of uh, the, the undead or the nation of the eternals. It was not like Elijah uh, who ascended into, who, who departed this earth on a fiery uh, carriage. It was not like Paul who descended, who ascended all the way to the third heaven, who was able to witness the heavens. It was not like any of those. Because those people needed something to lift them, something to ascend them. It was God who ascended them, who took them and was able to show them what the heavens was like. But with God, with our Lord and our God, Jesus Christ, it wasn't like that. He ascended with his own power, with his own will. It was, it was not like anything that we have seen before. And notice how he said, there no one has came down from the heavens except, uh, the way, no one ascended to the heavens except who came down and that is the son of man. And he calls himself the son of man. Uh, and he proclaims that the two natures never separated. It's teaching us the mystery of incarnation, which is really, really beautiful. Uh, it's really significant. From two natures into one nature. From two bodies into one body. It's that body that ascended. He doesn't separate them. He didn't say it was divinity that came down and now the Son of Man will ascend. No, no, no. He said, no one ascended to the heavens except the one that came down from the heaven. And that is the Son of Man who lives in heaven. It's so beautiful way, captivating way that Christ taught this mystery to Nicodemus and John chapter 3 verse 13. So he did not, you know, his ascension is truly beautiful, captivating, uh, although it was uh, a gift of hope as well. It was a, a true gift of glory uh, and hope as they stared into the heavens because they watched him for it. It was so glorious and so different as unlike anything that I've seen. The apostles stared at him for hours and then the angels came, two angels came and they spoke to them just as he had left in glory. Just as you have seen him ascend in glory, he'll come back again in glory. Do not worry. This was a hopeful message to them and it was a hopeful message to us because he will come back again to see what we have done with the gift that he has given us. And that's what he teaches us in Matthew chapter 25, uh, verse, uh, I believe, 15. He said, a wealthy man came and he saw his servants. And to his servants, he gave different talents. Two, 
uh, one, two, and five. And then he went to a far country. He left them and he went to a far country. He came back and they asked them what they did with that talent. And that's exactly what our Lord and our God, Jesus Christ, will do when he comes back. You see, him coming was his, his descension to this, to this earth. And him giving us those talents is like what he gave us, that salvation, those gifts, the seven sacraments, those beautiful gifts that he gave us on top of the cross. What are we doing with those gifts that he has given us? The baptism, the communion. What are we doing with them? The repentance. Do we exercise them? Are we benefiting from them? Are we fruitful of them? Or are we just wasting them? Are we just burying the gift that he has given us? So this is what he does. So him going away to a far country is him ascending. And then he said, he talked about the wealthy man coming back to ask those to ask their servants what they did with them. God has ascended. He will come back again to ask us what we have done with it. Not only that, we must be prepare ourselves for the second coming of the Lord. We must be hopeful that when He comes, we should be really excited so that we can show Him what we have done with the liberty and the gift that He has given us. So therefore, be prepared. Do not lose hope. It was His ascension was a gift of hope. He left with one line that really resonated with me. He said in, uh, in Ma Matthew chapter 28, I believe, He said, I will be with you. I will be with you. So significant. It's something that we should uh, put in our hearts. He said, I will be with you. Truly, He is with us. Truly, He is God that will watch over us. Truly, He is God that will protect us. Truly, He is Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Uh, may the blessing of the Father, the glory of the Son, the life of the Holy Spirit, the intercession of the Holy Virgin Mary, the helping hands of all the saints and all the angels be with all of you. Amen. Oh, oh, oh.